All right, guys, I just wanted to do a quick review of the Nikon D40. A lot of people have very fond memories of the D40 or the D40X. And this is a nice little camera. It's only six megapixels, but it's so much fun to use. And it definitely qualifies as a bargain basement deal because these days you can find these for 40 bucks. Okay, I bought this camera for $40. It even came with an extra battery. Now the shutter count on it was over 20,000, uh, but these guys are rated to 100,000. So I'm not worried too much about that. You can see it is a tiny, tiny DSLR. Uh, it still shares a lot of DNA of Nikon DSLRs. Okay, you've got everything uh, that you're used to. Uh, the one thing, uh, well, well, let's go over the, the things that are good, the things that are bad. And finally, guys, I'll show you some sample pictures, uh, which is ultimately what it's all about. Now on the good side, the camera is very compact. I mean, it practically fits in the palm of my hand. And even though uh, it's very tiny. The grip is actually quite deep here. It may not seem like it, uh, but it's quite comfortable to hold uh, with just one hand. One hand operation is entirely possible. It's 522 grams. It's got a pretty large LCD screen, three inches. I mean, the resolution isn't that great, 230,000 dots, uh, but the actual screen is quite nice. Uh, even includes a lot of helpful functions. So yeah, every time you press the question mark button, you get a little helpful screen. So it's definitely a camera oriented at beginners. Okay, the menu isn't too complicated. It's very simple. You know how these days we like to complain about complicated menus. Well, you're not gonna complain about the complicated menu uh, in this camera, but there's still a bunch of customization options. Uh, you have a dedicated control wheel at the back. Okay, so you can uh, change your shutter speed or aperture with that. You've got all the scene modes that you know and love on digital cameras. Most importantly, you've got program, shutter speed, priority, aperture priority, manual mode. You have a flash, built-in flash, very nice. And you've got a function button here that's customizable. I've customized this to change the ISO speed. Okay. So if I'm shooting in, let's say, aperture priority, I press the function button here, and the uh, ISO selector gets highlighted, and I can simply rotate the control wheel. Now the ISO goes all the way to 3200, uh, that's high one. Uh, one of the favorite things about this camera for a lot of people is it actually has a one over 500 second flash sync speed. It actually has back button focusing. You can customize the uh, AEL, AFL button uh, to do back button focusing. So that's how I use this camera. Now one of the biggest uh, upsides to using this camera guys, the amazing colors from the CCD sensor. It has an older six megapixel CCD sensor. And for a lot of people, this is outdated technology, uh, but there's a reason why these little cameras are still so popular today. The colors are so punchy and contrasty that, I don't know, it requires very little post-processing. Okay, so what are the downsides of this D40? Well, okay, it's an entry-level DSLR. I mean, for 40 bucks used, we're not gonna complain too much, uh, but let's talk about uh, what is obviously missing. Uh, the first glaring omission, I think, from these entry-level bodies is the lack of a front control dial. So we have the back control wheel, but we don't have another wheel at the front, and it's super, super annoying. I mean, I want full manual control of my camera, so I want to be able to quickly adjust shutter speed and aperture, and I constantly forget how you switch between the two modes. Okay, if we want to change the aperture, we'll actually have to put a lens on the camera, and I'll show you guys what the camera looks like with a lens. I have here a 35 millimeter DX 1.8G lens. This is practically a must buy lens if you're shooting DX uh, with Nikon, but you can, you can actually use this lens on a full frame uh, Nikon camera as well. I picked this one up used for about 120 US dollars. It's quite sharp actually uh, at all apertures and it gives you that uh, shallow depth of field on DX with the 1.8. Now it's not gonna be as good for portraiture as maybe the 50 1.8 or even the 85 1.8, but as a general all around lens for DX, I think you'd find it pretty hard to beat. It gives you that 50 millimeter or 52 millimeter roughly equivalent field of view. It's so much fun, especially paired uh, with a nice and small DX body like the D40. But the two of them make a really fun walk around uh, 50 millimeter combination. Okay, so we're in manual mode. We spin the wheel to control the, the shutter speed. And then if we wanna adjust the aperture is we have to hold down uh, this plus or minus button here 
okay and then spin the wheel and then that that way we adjust the aperture okay so what are the other downsides of the camera there are only three autofocus points there we go there are three autofocus points now one of the biggest downsides to this camera guys is the low light performance this is a daytime camera daytime or flash because if you try to use it in high ISOs I think anything above ISO 400 uh, starts getting a bit grainy now with the CCD sensor it's not that bad you can actually convert the really grainy images to black and white and they still come out come out okay uh, but anything above ISO 800 guys you're going to be severely disappointed with uh, if you're used to the quality and output of today's sensors image quality we can select raw which is good I like to shoot in raw but if we select uh, raw plus JPEG we only have the option of shooting with basic JPEG quality there are no dedicated buttons for ISO or white balance adjustments so you have to do that uh, in the menus now as I said you do have the option of customizing this function button and I've customized it to ISO that's really the most important thing I want to change on the fly okay the viewfinder uh, isn't going to be as big as the ones on larger cameras this is a penta mirror not a penta prism so keep that in mind that's one of the most annoying things uh, about this camera is the tiny tiny viewfinder uh, the continuous shooting speed is really not that high let's focus on something okay uh, it's certainly not going to stand up to professional demands it's not a weather resistant uh, camera by any means uh, it's not going to stand up to the rain or snow finally there is no exposure or white balance bracketing uh, so that's just something you have to live with I'm sure it's just a software limitation artificially put in there uh, to differentiate this DSLR uh, from the more professional cousins in the Nikon lineup all in all this is a very affordable uh, very compact a lot of fun to use uh, little camera um, have it as a secondary camera use it as a vacation hiking backup camera something like that it's a great camera to give to your friends to introduce them to the hobby of photography it's an absolutely phenomenal camera to learn about photography with because you get those helpful Nikon tips in the menu it really oriented the D40 to the consumer this is when Nikon wanted everyone the whole world to upgrade to DSLRs okay so you have all the controls that you're used to in terms of manual controls uh, you're not limited by anything and you do get that amazing 1 over 500 uh, flash sync speed it does not have a screw drive motor in it so you make sure the lens has an autofocus motor in it uh, if you're using autofocus lenses good lenses for this camera I would say any of the cheap zooms from Nikon like the VR2 18 to 55 millimeter would be a good match for this camera uh, none of the AFP lenses are going to work with this guy okay so stick to the uh, AFS G lenses I think for the most part uh, 18 to 55 would be good 18 to 70 another absolutely uh, decent choice for this camera 18 to 140 if you're looking for an all-in-one solution uh, but the camera really wakes up uh, when you use it uh, with basic prime lenses I would say the 1.8 G primes from Nikon are a perfect match for this little guy I've used it with the 35 millimeter uh, 1.8 G and I've also used it with my 50 millimeter 1.8 G and both of them are just a match made in heaven so let's look at some of the photos I've taken uh, with the D40 I mean that's really what it's all about and these were taken either with the 35 millimeter 1.8 DX or the 50 millimeter uh, 1.8 G FX prime lens which becomes a 75 millimeter equivalent and the two of these lenses are just such a fun and lightweight combination uh, on this little guy I had so much fun walking around and it's great when you're using a cheap camera uh, without too many capabilities so your expectations aren't really that high and you're just pleasantly impressed by anything that happens and see it's so much fun uh, to take pictures of any kind of nature or wildlife because those contrasty CCD colors uh, kind of give it an almost color filmic look uh, it's not like the clinical look you get from today's modern sensors these days we have to go into Photoshop uh, to kind of bring our photos to the same result but with cameras like the D40 it just happens naturally uh, here I've taken a few uh, macro shots just to show you uh, what it's capable of as I said pick it up for 40 bucks you're not going to be disappointed uh, that much I can guarantee and if you are disappointed well all you're out is $40 anyway guys thanks for watching this video this has been a quick cheap camera review uh, if you have any experience with the D40 or fond memories of cameras like it uh, let us know in the comment section and as always uh, subscribe for more and I'll see you guys